Hey y'all, Senior Ed Beard here, doing some saw maintenance today. So I wanted to take this opportunity to show you some things and show you a few of my saws. Uh, I'm going to start out with this Husqvarna 350. This is just a good old saw. It's not a pro saw, but it's been a great saw for me. I've Logged a lot of hours with this saw. Cut down a lot of trees. Used to do timber stand improvement. And uh, this was the saw we used. It's got a 16 inch bar. So you can't cut down real big trees, uh, but it's great for um, girdling trees, getting around them. The short blade. And it's good saw for bucking and lemon. Smaller trees, it's probably the most versatile saw I have, the one I use the most. So it's got a old chain on here that I've sharpened over and over and it needs to be replaced now. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this chain. So replacing the chain on this Husqvarna 350. Got my scrunch here. It's a screwdriver and wrench combination here. This is the main tool used for working on this saw. I run some steel saws too, and they use a different size scrunch. So I have one of those here as well. So, start out by taking this plate off. Making sure the chain breaks off and take that off. When I, uh, anytime I change the, uh, the chain, take this stuff apart, I like to clean it real good. Uh, so I'll go through here and Clean this up and, and everything. But, uh, this is your tensioner down here. It's a little, little screw here. So I'm just gonna turn that counterclockwise and loosen this up first. And just kind of slide the bar off there, off that tensioner, and take the chain off and take the bar off then. Main thing whenever you're do any work on your saws just to kind of inspect it as you go and look for any issues and uh, like I said cleaning it uh, these things get pretty dirty when you're running them all the time and even just running them a little bit they get pretty dirty a lot of oil in there and uh, you know you got your bar oil oil comes out here and and it feeds into this uh, little hole here and uh, right here goes in that hole and and uh, runs along the bar and keeps everything lubricated and keeps it from getting too hot but uh, all that oil and uh, collects the sawdust that the saw is making so things get dirty and and Got to clean them out so you can make sure things working out and everything. But uh, this chain, it's it probably has maybe one more sharpening I could do, but uh, it's getting where some of the teeth are different size and 
just doesn't cut really good. So I got this brand new chain I'm gonna put on here. Uh, you know, one thing I wanted to show you, if you, you ever get these chains and they're all wadded up and you can't figure out how to get them back to normal, you got these loops in there. Uh, you just grab these loops like this and uh, kind of pull them out like that, pull it out like that, and then you can just flip the chain over to get it back to the way it's supposed to be. Um, This bar is pretty old. It's a organ bar, and um, these bars they'll get grooves in them after you run them for a while, and so you gotta take a flat file and file them down. Take those burrs off the side here. This one's not too bad. I think I. Worked on this one the last time I sharpened my chain, so it's it's not bad. Uh, one thing I usually like to do is I don't have the you take a little screwdriver or something small and just kind of get down in this groove and clean that groove out real good messing around with it. Stuff likes to get down in there. Some of these bars have a uh, place where you can lubricate this tip. This one does, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lubricate that. Now some of them actually have a tip that comes off, and you can switch them out. This one's not made like that, but. Uh, I don't know, I like these organ bars pretty well. Uh, some people don't like them, but uh, they've always done pretty good for me. So, anyway, I'm gonna get to cleaning and then we'll check back here in a little bit. Okay, so I got this cleaned up pretty good. Uh, Got this plate here cleaned up real good and all this area and got this all cleaned up. Uh, it's not perfect. You know, it's just gonna get dirty again, so uh, don't worry about getting it perfect, but I just try to get most of the gunk out of there and, and you know, you wanna make sure that this is all clean here because if that doesn't, this bar didn't fit up on here, you know, good, then it's gonna run oil out and it's not gonna oil correctly. So, um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just gonna oil this tip. So there's a couple holes here in the tip where you can oil it, or grease it, I should say. And, uh, I got a little gunk in them, so right now I'm just cleaning some of that gunk out with a little pointed tool here. I'm just taking my greaser and stick it down in that hole and and uh, give it a few squirts. Do the same on the other side. There's also a needle bearing here, uh, right in the center, 
that uh, needs to be lubricated as well. So we'll give that a couple spurts. Got me a flat file here, and uh, said this bar is pretty good. It's not got a lot of burrs, but I'm just gonna take it and run it down here a few times yeah. on the top and on the sides. Not got any burrs that might be there. Cars. Hey! Looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean out the oiler hole here. Every time I take my bar off, usually that every time I sharpen it or every other time probably flip the bar over. Kind of like rotating your tires. Keeps it wear keeps it wearing evenly and everything. So I believe I had it on like this before, so we're gonna flip it over like this. I'm ready to put my chain on. Well, Remember, I loosened the other one up and that this one's too tight to go on there. It's the same chain, but these things stretch over time. So being a brand new one, I'm going to have to loosen this tensioner up a little bit to get this one on. goes. Now we're just going to replace this plate. Before I get this too tight, I want to make sure I got, got the right tension here. It'll tend to tighten up when you tighten these nuts up. But that's 
that right there. I'll check it again once we get it tight. If we need to, we'll loosen it up a little bit. like it's about the right tension you want to uh, you pull up on it for the uh, teeth to just be about the top of the bar now I'm gonna check the air filter make sure it's in good condition Got three screws here. I can see it. There's the air filter. I'll put the choke on. I'm taking the air filter off that keeps stuff from falling down in there. Twist off like that. This one's pretty dirty. These are made um, clean pretty easily. Just put a little bit of gas in there, shake it around, and let it dry out. Put it back on there. Clean that, put it back on. Okay, we got the air clean, air filter all cleaned out. So we're just gonna put that back on here. Put the cover back on. We should be ready to go. All right, well, now that we've got the new chain on, we're gonna start it up and make sure it's oiling properly. You ought to be able to see a little bit of oil whenever you hold the tip near the, this piece of wood here, the stump. This saw usually starts up pretty easy. for a little bit the chain loosened up a little bit so go back and tighten it but uh, looks like it's oiling right so I think we're ready to go this is a 346 XP XPG actually the G is means it's got a heated handle uh, this is basically the same saw as the 350 but it's the pro version of it it's got a little bit more uh, horsepower and, and torque. Uh, parts are made a little better, made for be more durable. But uh, basically the same size, use it for the same things. Uh, this one, I 
haven't used much, haven't had to, because 350, it, uh, it just keeps going. So I kind of keep this one in good condition, and that's kind of a backup for the 350. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to subscribe to the Senior Redbeard YouTube channel for more videos like these. Until next time, I'm Senior Redbeard.